What's up everyone, we're back. I'm Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Ali, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. And within dermatology, that also includes hair growth. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about our top hacks for using minoxidil and just hair growth in general. So minoxidil is the gold standard for treating hair loss at home. And we're going to show you how to use this to get the best results. So all things minoxidil and hair loss, here we go. Now, before we get into this video, there's somebody at home watching and they're thinking to themselves, these guys don't have great hair. How dare they be talking about hair loss? And it is a very important topic to both of us. We both care about our hair quite a bit, but the truth is our hair would be much worse if we did nothing about it. So, so it is working. I promise you that it is working. Now let's get into it. Here we go. Here we go. So a brief history of minoxidil. Minoxidil started as a blood pressure medication. So initially it was meant to treat hypertension. People would take it by mouth. And then a bunch of people in the study started growing hair everywhere. And they were like, whoa, why is everyone growing hair? Maybe this is a side effect of the medication. And then what ended up happening was a company called Rogaine or a brand called Rogaine started marketing the topical version, oral minoxidil, as a treatment for hair loss. And even to this day, it is the only over-the-counter approved treatment for androgenetic hair loss in both men and women. Right, and so what you'll see at the store are different versions of this. And the first hack regards which one you should be purchasing. So you'll see 5%, you'll see 2%. And the first hack is that everyone should be using 5% minoxidil. And preferably the foam. One, 5% because it's been shown in studies to be more effective than 2% regardless of gender. So 5% regardless of gender, but also because the foam has less irritating or allergenic ingredients than the liquid, which has propylene glycol, which a lot of people do not react well to. So in my preference, if you like the format, I like foam over the liquid. Yeah, if you can survive the format, that is the one you should be using. Okay, so now we know minoxidil is kind of your go-to. It is something that you do have to use over a long period of time, so it's not gonna work right away. Even with any hair loss treatment, you have to give it at least six months to see results. Maybe you'll start to see some little nubbins of hair come out at the three month. And a lot of people will say, well, do you have to use it forever? Yeah, I mean, if you don't water a plant forever, it would die. It's not like you're gonna lose more hair than you would have already lost with normal aging. So don't worry too much about that. The next two tips are gonna to have to do with how to make minoxidil actually more effective at home for you. So first up, microneedling plus minoxidil. Right, so one of the barriers to entry is your barrier to entry and that is your skin. So one of the things that works best is to take these sterile needles ideally and create these channels in your skin to help the minoxidil absorb more deeply, make it more effective because if you look under the microscope at the scalp, this is some pretty thick skin. It's actually pretty thick subcutaneous fat underneath the skin and that's where the hair lives and that's where the ingredient needs to go. 100%. And so if you look at any study on any topical pharmaceutical agent, what they find is that the stratum corneum, which is that very, very top thin layer of the skin, is the greatest barrier to product penetration into the skin. So first you have to break that stratum corneum. Second, to get deep into the skin where those hair follicles are to stimulate them, it needs to get even deeper into the skin. So when we look at the studies of minoxidil alone versus minoxidil plus microneedling, Minoxidil plus microneedling has been more effective than minoxidil alone in every single study. Now, the depth of the needle or the length of the needle in all the studies have been 1.5 millimeters. Now, there's one study on mice that shows that 0.25 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters are quite effective because it's able to break that stratum corneum layer. Now, this has not been proven out in humans. Regardless, 1.5 or even a lower, smaller needle could be quite effective for you. So in general, we advise against using bigger needles on the skin at home. In the office, obviously that's controlled setting, professional setting, very good results. At home, generally we'll stick to smaller needles. And so theorizing, because the stratum corneum is the biggest hurdle, even a smaller needle will probably be beneficial when combining it with minoxidil. Now, if you are gonna be doing this at home, you wanna make sure that you're cleaning the skin before, 
but also that you're cleaning the needles after every use or you're using a new needle or a new derma roller before every use because the biggest risk would be that you introduce infection into the skin which would make your hair loss much worse so just make sure that you're cleaning those needles and finally this should be not used on the same night that you're using minoxidil so the studies that this was done in now do i think it's risky if you do it on the same night i mean who knows but ultimately in all the studies that they did microneedling plus minoxidil they, let's say they microneedled on sunday on monday through saturday they used minoxidil and then again on sunday they would microneedle so they didn't microneedle on the same night that they used minoxidil so just be careful it's only once a week microneedling and then the other six nights of the week you're using the topical minoxidil next we will incorporate one of our favorite ingredients to elevate minoxidil and this is tretinoin it's also something i'm extremely passionate about and as you can tell by like my facial expression kind of pissed about this was like the most misunderstood hack of 2024 people everywhere tretinoin grows hair tretinoin grows hair it really does not the studies almost exclusively show that tretinoin plus minoxidil grow hair and there are two major reasons why. One of them is that it can actually increase the penetration of the medication. And so, like we said, penetration is always an inhibitor for something being effective when it's applied topically. And tretinoin has been used in many cases to increase the penetration of other medications. So theoretically, tretinoin can increase the penetration of your topical minoxidil. But there's also a more thoughtful mechanism of why it actually enhances the efficacy of minoxidil. So you have a fancy little enzyme in your hair follicles called sulfotransferase. Now, the more active this enzyme, the better response you get from minoxidil. And tretinoin activates this enzyme. So it has been shown to show to turn and convert minoxidil non-responders into responders. So that combination is very, very important. And interestingly too, just saying aspirin turns that enzyme down. So as much as tretinoin helps, aspirin may inhibit it. Um, just throwing a little tidbit of information out there because that also just does not exist and you probably need to hear it. However, if you need aspirin because you are trying to prevent a stroke or a heart attack, continue using your aspirin. You gotta prioritize your hair <laughs> versus your heart or your brain. So definitely focus on your internal organs <laughs> first. Now that being said, retinoids, plus minoxidil can increase their efficacy. I'd start off with just using your minoxidil alone until your scalp gets used to it, but if you wanna enhance the penetration or you're not responding to it as well, then you can add in your retinoid. Next hack, oral minoxidil versus topical minoxidil. Almost every study that's ever been done on this shows that low dose oral minoxidil in both men and women is more effective than even 5% topical minoxidil. So if you can tolerate it, oral minoxidil is actually the preferred route. And I will go one step further because the question is, what about both? Could you use both? And I would propose, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think you do find that this is prescribed in combination. It is a bit redundant, but sometimes we will duplicate effects in even like acne regimens to get an added benefit. So if you had to pick one, oral is more effective. If you want to err on safety, topical is probably a little safer. If you want to just get like the best results possible, uh, then you might consider doing both. And you do have to get oral minoxidil prescribed, so that's a conversation you'll have with your respective dermatologist. Right. And oral minoxidil is technically not FDA approved for hair loss. And so again, this is going to be a discussion with your dermatologist to make sure that this is the right choice for you. But, and it also has other side effects like swelling in the legs, you know, puffiness around the eyes. It can cause orthostatic hypotension, where when you stand up, you could start to feel faint. And so, of course, this is a discussion with your dermatologist, but it is more effective. And then we're gonna go into some bonus hacks. Some bonus hacks here is that even though we love minoxidil, combination therapy with minoxidil plus other things is gonna amplify the effects of minoxidil in general, especially if you have that androgenetic or hormone-driven type of alopecia in the scalp. So when you use finasteride plus minoxidil, that's gonna be more effective. Dutasteride plus minoxidil, that could be more effective. If you use low level light therapy plus minoxidil, that could be more effective. So using these together, if you look at it, I always say that growing hair is like a garden. You don't just do water, you do fertilizer, you do sunlight, these are all very important. So when treating hair loss, using minoxidil plus other things is gonna amplify its benefit. Right, and if you think about why that would work, it's because the masculine hormones it work on the hair follicle that eventually cause it to miniaturize, shorten the antigen or growth phase, and eventually disappear. So minoxidil works on the growth phase, 
the hormonal part actually works upstream on the hormones. You get this like complementary synergistic benefits that treats a more a comprehensive picture than just one ingredient alone. Absolutely. So in a lot of my patients, uh, specifically for men, I'll do oral or topical minoxidil plus finasteride as a starting treatment. And then for women, if it's appropriate for them, I'll do a topical or oral minoxidil plus an oral spironolactone, and that way you're gonna get combination treatment for this androgenetic alopecia. The next hack that I think is one of the most social facing forward ones is ketoconazole. What is this magical little ingredient that lives in your over-the-counter dandruff shampoo, and why might this help your hair loss? Well, uh, it works in two ways. The first way I'll take is actually the more indirect way, and that is it helps with inflammation. There's some thought that the yeast that causes dandruff can cause enough inflammation that it can damage the hair. Now, is it directly causing damage or is it like a subtle byproduct? We're not really sure, but just the anti-inflammatory component of the ketoconazole and the killing of the yeast might help alleviate some of that hair loss. Absolutely, so there are a lot of expensive shampoos out there for hair loss, but truthfully, none of them has showed consistent results in independent studies the way that topical ketoconazole shampoos have. And so if there was one shampoo I was gonna buy for hair loss that I would be pretty confident would work would be a ketoconazole shampoo. Now, there's another way that this works is that it also is an androgen inhibitor. And so because androgenetic alopecia is caused by androgens acting on the hair follicle, which miniaturizes them, by blocking these androgens, it can be quite effective at stopping hair loss. Right, so there's your shampoo hack for your hair. Now, for these types of shampoos, you wanna leave them on the scalp for two to three minutes, make sure that that medication really sets in. That's gonna make it more effective for dandruff. You also wanna massage it in with a little bit of a scalp scrubber, leave it in there, allow the medication to work, and then wash it out. And the final bonus tip for hair loss is that time is hair. Now, this is a term that we apply in cardiology where when someone has a heart attack, we say that time is heart or time is brain and stroke, right? So basically the faster you intervene when someone's having a stroke or a heart attack, the more likely you are to get reperfusion, the more likely you are this person is to survive. And it's the same thing with hair loss. Time is hair. The quicker you intervene with treatments like minoxidil, the more likely that they are gonna be effective and the more likely that you're gonna actually get your hair back without a transplant. And so the sooner you act, when you start noticing hair loss, the more likely you are to see results. So act quickly, don't delay your hair loss treatment, especially if your hair is important to you like it is to us. Yeah, exactly. It is interesting kind of trying to push this into the same category though. It's like time is brain, time is heart, time is hair, but it is still true. Studies show over and over again, the sooner you start, the better your results will be and the longer you will be able to keep your hair. And it may not be infinitely. Like the odds are this is not infinite. And let me address this concern right here. I see you keyboard warriors out there, you're typing away. Do you have to use minoxidil forever? And the answer is yes, because this is the same across the board for any age-related change. Our bodies are programmed to age, that's the trajectory we are all on, and anything that mitigates the effects of time is a permanent thing. So yes, it won't regress. You won't like lose all your hair as soon as you stop it, but you'll go back to the same trajectory that you were headed on if you do stop it. Absolutely. So the best way that this is explained to me is that your hair loss lifeline is like a treadmill. It kind of keeps turning over. Now, if you start minoxidil, it kind of sets you backwards on your timeline or pauses that timeline. But if you stop the minoxidil, you're going to start losing hair at the same rate that you were going to lose hair anyway. So again, it's something to nurture your hair in the process to keep it. So it is something of a long-term commitment. Now, if you stop it, you're just gonna go back to where you were. You're not gonna lose more hair than if when you started it is. So don't be too concerned about that. And it does take a long time to work, but it is the most effective treatment that we have available over the counter. So it's still something that your dermatologist will often recommend, despite there's a lot of other people that will try to sell your hair loss treatments. This is really still the one that I would recommend first for most people. Yeah, it's the first, it's the core that's the staple. You build on it from there and that is it. So if this is an ingredient for you, if this is what you need for your hair, then I would go check it out and we will have more hair hacks coming. All right, we're back. Do we look different? Maybe we look different. We've been doing this more often than usual, and sometimes we just feel like a video is not complete. We needed to drop two more hacks that felt tantamount to this video, and we could not release it unless these two hacks were completed. So first would be using minoxidil for B12. 
beard growth. Right. Now, there's a very interesting relationship between the hair on your head and the hair on your face. They are at odds. And no one talks about this because how would this come up in small talk and conversation throughout the day? But ingredients that may help grow hair here might stop growth here or ingredients that grow hair here may stop growth here. Why is that? It's because the hormones that help grow hair here are the same hormones that might decrease hair here. So one ingredient that can help in both areas is Rogaine or Minoxidil, right? So Rogaine or Minoxidil is hormone independent. It makes you grow hair everywhere. And this is why if you take oral minoxidil, you can grow hair everywhere. This is why if your minoxidil drips onto your face, you can grow hair on your forehead. All of these things are relevant because there's a study that shows that topical lotion, 3% minoxidil can promote beard growth. My opinion is that any form of minoxidil is going to promote beard growth. So you can just rub it into your beard and it will promote that beard growth. Now, I believe the script is working on something in this category. So I don't know if it'll be out by now. I don't know if it'll ever be out, but I received a sample of this like six months ago. So stay tuned for that potentially. Let's talk about the last hack. The last hack, so basically this has become a game of where do you have hair? <laughs> where do you want it to grow? The last hack here, we'll go with eyebrows. So do you want a bushier brow? Well, if so, because again, this hair growth is independent of hormone influence. Again, minoxidil will be a hero ingredient here for eyebrow growth. Absolutely. Just like we said, it will grow hair anywhere. So you can, of course, use it on the eyebrows. I have a little bit of anecdotal experience here because my wife did a lot of tweezing, a lot of threading, a lot of waxing when she was younger. I did as well, I'm not gonna lie. And for some reason, she suffered more from like attraction alopecia on her eyebrows where her eyebrows didn't really grow back in fully from that. She started to use minoxidil on her eyebrows and it's actually helped a ton to make her eyebrows a lot thicker. So I have anecdotal experience that it works really well. My main concern with minoxidil around the eyes is that for me specifically, it causes a lot of puffiness due to the water retention when using minoxidil. And you definitely don't want this to get in the eyes. It's definitely being used off-label. So you have to be very delicate with how you apply this. Now she's using one of those little spoolies where she dips it into the minoxidil and spoolies it into her eyebrows and basically combs it into there. This is actually a really good way to get it into those areas that you don't want it dripping too much. It's a really good way to get it into your beard as well. So using a spoolie is kind of like half a hack essentially to add to our list. I'm going to just quickly Google a spoolie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen these things. It's the mascara thing. So yes, using a spoolie to get this into your eyes. Again, not into your eyes, <laughs> using a spoolie to get this at the base of the hair towards the follicle, right? You don't want to brush this into the hair. You want to get this at the base of your hair follicle is another great, great, great way to use this ingredient. Yeah. So that pretty much wraps it up. We felt that that was important. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you want us to talk about next. Yeah, thank you all so much for being a part of this, and let us know what hacks you want us to do next time. This has become kind of a fun series for us, even though we do have to consistently add in hacks at a later date, but we're enjoying it, so let us know what you want us to talk about. We'll see you in the next one. See you next time.